Hi, welcome back to this edition of Learning Simplified. In this session, we try to understand how the ATM switch settlement uh, process works. So let's do a quick recap of what are the different transaction types. Number one is the honors transaction, which is the bank's card and their own ATM. So in such cases, the account is debited online. The second type is the remote honors, which means the bank's card, but used in another bank's ATM. So while in some cases, the account is blocked online real time, or the account is debited online. So you could have either of these two scenarios. And finally, we have offers transactions, which means another bank's card used in my ATM. So in this case, because the bank's customer is not involved, GL entries are passed online or nothing gets posted online. It happens as an end of day batch because here there is no urgency as the customer account is not involved. So basically these are the three types of transactions. This is an overview schematic which says that the ATM talks to the switch and the switch interacts with the core banking system by way of ISO 8583 message protocol, which we have seen earlier. Now, what are the two key areas of a reconciliation. So, the, so let's go back to this schematic. Now in this schematic, what we notice here is that let's assume there are 10 transactions done on the ATM. At the switch, there could be nine success and one failure. And at the CPS side, I might have eight success and two failures or probably only seven success. Maybe one of them never reached the switch, never reached the core banking. So it's important that we reconcile what happened at the ATM, what happened at the switch and the CPS. In the perfect scenario, all of them should match. But obviously there could be various scenarios under which these transaction counts may not match. Hence, one of the key element of a switch settlement is to do reconciliation, to ensure that all transactions in the switch are there in the CBS and vice versa. If there is any discrepancy, it is flagged off for doing manual correction. Secondly, the other important key area is passing off accounting or debiting the account in cases where the accounts were not debited online. So if you recollect in our earlier slide, we showcased there were two scenarios for, for remote owners, another for offers. So, as part of this file, the accounting entries are debited. So these are for the remote owners cases where the initially the amount was blocked or the cases of offers transactions. So as part of the file upload, the offers entries are passed or in the case of remote owners, the block is removed and the accounting entries are posted. So for these two scenarios, the settlement file is used. These are the two scenarios. So if you look at the process of settlement, there are three areas. Number one, the transactions done from the switch are sent to the CBS every day after a cutoff time. So for example, from 4 p.m. Saturday to 4 p.m. Sunday, all the transactions during this period is sent at let's say 5 p.m. So similarly, 4 p.m. Sunday to 4 p.m. Monday will be sent at 5 p.m. of Monday and so on. CBS does a recon based on the comparison of the switch file in the CBS data store and flags any discrepancy in the form of reports. And finally, it passes the required accounting entries for remote owners and offers transactions. Now, there could be cases where the settlement happens neither at the switch or the CBS. So the bank may employ a third party reconciliation software and the data from the ATM, the switch, and the CBS are all sent to the reconciliation software. And this does the kind of matching between all these three interfaces based on 
key parameters like the RRN, the retrieval reference number, or the stand, or the card card number, and so on. So based on this, it does the reconciliation and also creates a settlement feed so that the CBS can debit the accounts for remote owners or the offers cases, which we saw earlier. So some of the key functions of uh, reconciliation software is it creates lots of reports, it creates a comparison summary, it gives you what is reconciled, what is unreconciled, suspect transactions, ATM cash balancing, and so on. It also does a force match transaction in case manually want to force match transactions. And of course, it creates a settlement file and it is sent to the switch for, it's sent to the core banking system for processing. So I hope this gave you a very clear idea as to how the ATM switch reconciliation happens. Thank you.